Sarah with Obadiah's and today I am here with Bill the boiler expert and we are going to do a general product overview for you guys on the Heatmaster the C250 model. Now the C250 model is going to be labeled and sold as a coal boiler. I've done lots of other videos with you guys on that in the past um, and coal boilers as long as they are not a stoker model they do also have the ability to burn wood as well. So we're going to give you a general product overview and show you how this system works. This is a C250 model. It's got a 20 by 20 door. Uh, it's got ball bearings on it for latch, uh, so it's a solid latch. Um, inside the stove there are shaker grates in here. Uh, the, the smoke actually goes through a three, pa three bypass system to get out. It comes to the front of the stove, goes out the back, comes underneath this plate here and then goes out to the top of the plate and goes to the chimney. There's also a full length ash pan in the stove with a handle in it to be able to dump the ashes. And there again, it's got the same ball bearing latch so it's a positive lock on the stove. Light on the system, turn light on so you can see what you're doing. Uh, I like to see a lot of people will have a different light pole or something here because that light does not shine into the stove where you want it. So typically they'll have, like on my own stove, I've got a light off to the side so it shines into the stove so I can see what's going on in there. Or people use a flashlight. Um, the stove actually comes with a headlamp. Oh. A lot of people lose that, but the mm -hmm. um, headlight off works good to be able to see in the stove so you can see what you're looking at. On the top of the stove, uh, there's a water float up there. This one is down because of the uh, the stove is cold. When that stove heats back up again, that float will go up to about three quarters. So if they have to top it off, you know where the float is. You want to keep it at least between half and three quarters to try towards the full mark. So you guys might notice in this video that there is not a chimney cap located on the top of this unit. And this pretty much goes against everything that I've ever said in any of my other videos that you've watched before. So I am going to have Bill, the boiler expert, explain why many outdoor boilers will not require a chimney cap. This, this stove has got, uh, it comes with that stub that sticks out of the stove and I like to see at least one other chimney on top of that. This one has two so we keep the smoke away from the yard a little bit more. But after that uh, we don't like to have any more on there if possible. Then you've got to uh, frame them up and to be able to, to guy wire them somehow. On the chimney cap with dry wood or semi-dry wood there's still 15 to 25 percent moisture in most of the wood that people burn. As the stove burns the wood, it gives off the unburnt wood gas or the smoke, and there's moisture in that. And that, when it's extremely cold, that moisture goes up and the smoke goes up the chimney. If there's a cap on it, it wants to hit that cap, which is cold, and it'll condensate and rain right back down into the stove. When uh, the stove is not in operation, but between spring and fall, you can put a cap on it or put a bucket over it, it's fine, but when they're running, uh, unless you're in some place where you're gonna, afraid of a forest fire, very little of any sparks come out of this stove. So that's best to operate them without a chimney cap on them. However, one thing we do wanna point out about this particular model is it's summertime and really there should be some type of bucket or cap located yep. on the top because in the summer you might get rainstorms, you might get birds, rodents, anything that could possibly get down in there and inside the unit. So ideally in the summertime when you are not burning, please put a bucket over it. Um, a couple other selling points that we wanna point out about the Heatmaster line is they do give you a lift hook on the top to be able to lift the unit as well as forklifts underneath. And with the forklifts underneath, if you're gonna run a forklift in there, the fork should go clear through the stove to be able to lift on the frame of the stove on both sides. You don't want to lift in the center of the stove because it's just thin metal underneath there with the insulation under it. So you could dent that or possibly puncture it. So you want to make sure your forks go clear through the stove so you don't have any problems with uh, bending or breaking anything underneath the stove. Also the control panels here. Um, there's a light on the top, turn the light on and off in the stove. The furnace, uh, there's a, for the electronic control, there's an on and off switch, a toggle switch for that. These will light up when they're in operation red and the, the, the temperature of the stove always shows up in here. 
Open the door in the back of the unit. It's a full length door. <coughs> Control power supply for the main junction box is up here. The main power supply is here. This is a coal timer. If you want to burn coal or mix with wood, but you don't use it when you're burning wood because it doesn't need to be, the coal timer, if coal stays shut down too long, it will not relight itself. Not like wood that holds coal. There's four supply return on the each side and then um, ball valves come with the stove so you don't have to worry about that. There's also a drain down here to be able to drain the stove. <clears throat> the fan sets on top here, easy access to the fan. There's also an adjustment on the side of the fan for the amount of air that goes into the stove. Uh, this one's set at 50 percent. If you've got extremely dry wood you can shut that down. You don't get as much air in it, doesn't burn as much wood. Okay. If you burn wood on a greener side you turn this up a little bit more and maybe give it a 60% or even 70%. Depends on the type of wood you're burning. Uh, solenoid down here, uh, the spring in here. When the solenoid engages, it lifts this damper plate here. And this spring always makes sure that the damper plate closes completely inside this box. Uh, right underneath the fan, there's an air vent down here to bring in outside air because the stove is pretty tight and you need that outside air to come in so the fan gets enough air to blow in. The insulation on both the doors, fully insulated insulation here. The stove is fully insulated all the way around. Up in the upper corner here, if you can see that, easy access to a snap disc. Oh, that's nice. This is automatic temperature control. If your boiler overheats, this snap disc will kick out at 190 degrees and it's automatic. It won't kick back in till about a 40 degree differential, kick back in around 150 degrees. Uh, this is where the temperature probe goes in here, but that's, I've never replaced one of them on Heatmaster. Oh, wow. And because uh, it's uh, harder to burn this up. Okay. That's but um, good. it, uh, like I say, this, the stove is fully operational when it comes. Hook it up to power. Power comes in the main corner down here, and you're good to go. Fill it with water, and you're off to the races. One other thing we do want to point out is this is going to be your pump location right here, but your pump is sold separately. Okay, and we have other videos about sizing pumps. This is going to be, you know, either done by your plumber or whoever is selling you your um, plumbing components for your boiler system. And this will vary depending on how far away the boiler system is located from your house, your heat demand, your BTU load, your heat exchangers. There's a lot of factors that'll go into this. If you guys find these product overviews helpful, if you enjoy seeing this information, please don't forget, give me a thumbs up, you guys. That helps me so much. It keeps me traveling on the road to produce more videos for you guys. Also, do not forget to click the subscribe button in the corner of the channel. If you click that little bell there, that'll notify you of all of the latest videos. Thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.